Um, hello everyone, my name is Timothy Gurgis. Um, uh, today we're going through uh, model assembly with Stefanos. Uh, we're talking about uh, what has been introduced for 2025. Um, and we've got a couple of really good, couple of good things to go through today. So the first um, tool that we've introduced for 2025 is the auto area tool. So this completes our auto connector generation tools. Um, so we've got the auto point, the auto fastener, auto line. Um, the auto fastener, I think we introduced a release or two ago. So the auto area is the last sort of implementation on this side. Um, the intention for this one, if I can, I'll just run it through here, is again, just where people might use adhesives or, uh, and we'll go through some additional examples for what we've got. But in this case, the user just specifies the parts they want to connect, the distance they want to search. Um, fundamentally, that's really all uh, the inputs that are required. Um, this is an unedited video for full body and white, so we can skip ahead a little bit, but it doesn't take too long. Um, it's generated, in this case, 2,600 connectors. Uh, if we isolate them all, we can see the, between all the flanges and all the various gaps and areas and stuff where somebody might have adhesives. So this is really just, again, for cases where you don't necessarily have connector information and you want to quickly generate, as an example, a way of contacting or a way of, of, of tying with adhesive your, your models together or, whoever, or however you're using area-based connectors. The next topic that we've introduced for 2025 is the contact-based connector. So the contact-based connector effectively is a connector realization that only generates a contact. Um, we currently support surface-to-surface -surface and node-to-surface across OptiStruct, Abacus, Dyna, Radios. But in this case, uh, we support both line connectors and area connectors. So for, for this particular example, I've taken the model we had previously. We select one of the connectors. We generate a specified contact type. We've got the option here for the card image and as well as number of, um, if you want to increase sort of the influence patch, you can by increasing the number of elements. In this case, we generate a group and the sets and everything's managed from the connector side. So if you unrealize the connector, it will delete the sets from the group. Um, and what this really kind of sits well with is in the cases where you might be using auto contact, um, but you want to change representations and revision management for your parts, this might be a good alternative to that. We use the same logic that auto contact does in the background to do the area connector generation. Um, and I can go through that in a minute with, with, the, uh, with the live demo. And the other thing that we've introduced for attachments is the concept of shape attachments. So attachments up into this point, we've got a couple of different flavors of attachments. Um, we've got the typical hole one. So we're looking for a feature in this case, a hole. We have the um, projection one. So it just projects onto a surface and grabs a patch of elements. And we're now introducing a shape type attachment. So in this case, you specify almost a, a bounding box. So in, in this case, we've got a node in space. I can create an attachment on this node in space. We change the feature type to capture shape. And we've got a couple of different shapes for the user can specify. But in this case, I just want everything within a 50 mil sphere on this particular part. And it goes through and grabs that. and, and any nodes that fall within that sphere uh, added to the added to the attachment. We have the option to show and hide the display of that particular sphere as well, if you don't want to see it from a graphics point of view. Um, it's just, again, another quick way if you want to, if you've a non-standard area of con connectivity that you wanted to be a part of an attachment, so you can connect it connected to it, or you want it to, to use for um, interfacing between subsystems, this is a nice way of, of effectively just grabbing that influence area that you want associated to the attachments. And the last thing I'll hand over to Stefanos to go through quickly, um, to go through what we've done from a documentation point of view, Stefanos, I'll share with you, and then we can jump to some live demo and discussion.
So, uh, hello everyone, I'm Stefanos and I would like to present to you today something that we are introducing for 2025.0 that I believe anyone using SIM card connectors will find uh, interesting and beneficial, hopefully. So, with 2025.0 we are introducing some new sections on the documentation page for SIM card connectors. We are adding two common use case scenarios where you can find them on the documentation page, profile welding and fillet weld use case. Uh, these are guides for the user on how to achieve a successful realization. We have seen these uh, use cases often on questions we get for SIM card connectors, so hopefully these sections will quickly provide the answers users seek to successfully realize certain scenarios. In addition to that, we are also introducing a troubleshooting section for SIM quad connectors. On that section, we have documented most of the errors for SIM quad, and we explain why its error appears as well as some workarounds to resolve them and get a successful realization. As you can see here, for example, we have the message on the left, which is the message that appears to the user when he gets this error. And on the right, we have the reason and the workaround. So we try to explain to the user why this error is generated, as well as what to do to, to change it and get a successful realization. Uh, this uh, section is split to specific and general guidelines, and I will showcase this live in a minute. But uh, this is done because some of the connector errors are more general and can be triggered by various factors. So this makes them difficult to document. And for those cases, we give some general guidelines which should help resolve most issues. Let me showcase the new documentation page for SimQuad Live. So as you can see here, we are on the documentation page and we have these two new sections. Uh, this is, for example, the profile welding use case where we guide the user on how to define the control, which uh, aspects are uh, critical for this uh, use case, and the others can be left to the default values. Then we say anything that is also important. In this case, you have to maybe imprint some significant nodes on the connectors. And finally, we have some examples where the realization is shown to the user on what to expect. We can also go to the troubleshooting page. As you can see, we have specific guidelines and general guidelines. Specific guidelines is what I showed to you previously, where we have a specific message and the reasoning and the workaround. And we are trying to provide here some uh, info to the user on uh, how and why these uh, errors appear. And also some general guidelines on uh, specifically imprinting errors which can tr be triggered by various uh, reasons and for that reason it is very difficult to document them as we did on the specific errors. On top of those changes uh, we are also introducing some uh, have also changed the text that appears to the user for some SIM quad uh, connector errors. We realized that some of the text messages would not convey the problem in a clear way to the user and this would lead to confusion and frustration. So we tried to, to change some of the error messages to better convey to the user what the problem is. And I will showcase a couple of them live here. In this example, we have two connectors. This one uh, is the user would expect this connector to be an L-type connection based on this. But if I change this to, let's say, a T-connection and try to realize this, I will get an error and the error now says to the user what the connection is classified as. Uh, before it would only show um, connection required T, which was not uh, really helpful. Now you, the user can clearly see what the connection is classified as and he can quickly go and change the connection classification and realize again. So this is one of the errors we changed. We changed the text. Uh, the other one, is on this case, for example, this is an error that I see a lot. Let's say I want to create a line connector between these two parts. I can define this line here and this connector control. And it fails. If we try to see what it, why it fails, it says that the edge treatment required for the weld size definition is more than the edge treatment limit. This helps the user to point him to this option which says edge treatment limit. So in this case, the user can increase the edge treatment limit 
and we get a successful realization. So hopefully with these changes, it's, uh, it is easier for users to understand why the realization is failing. And on top of that, we also have, we also provide the guidelines on the documentation page. So hopefully we get more successful realization and less failed ones. I would like to point out that this is an ongoing initiative, so we will continue documenting error for other realizations and changing the text where necessary. We will also introduce more use cases on the future for different realizations as well. These certain aspects of the order area. So in this case, friendly uh, rail model. Uh, so I'm going to select two of these parts. We're going to generate an uh, order area between them so we can see oh, I've got my connected definition size set pretty small. Let me just update that so we can see it a bit clearer. Okay, so we've got a couple of connectors auto generated between those. Now, in this case, if I were to use auto contact, auto contact would be fine. But in this particular example, let's say we want to um, change the um, change the mesh size or the representation or the revision in this particular case of one of these parts. So in this case, we define a contact-based connector. I can define it as surf to surf or node to surf. We can change the number of elements. So this just basically increases the patch of the of the contact. I'll select my two connectors. We apply the new control we've just created. We realize them. We have two contacts created. So if we do a review here, oh, review. There we go. We can see our contact patches for these particular parts. Now, in this case, that's fine, but let's say we want to change the revision of this part. So this is where um, we can select this part. We're going to go representations load from library. We can change to a two mil mesh. So we've got a, a more dense mesh in here. We go back to our connectors. They've unrealized automatically. Um, you can see that the sets and the contacts are gone for that particular contact. And if we re-realize them again, and we do a quick review, it's recreated, reselected those the same patch size that we had previously, just on a smaller mesh density. So the intention here really is to provide a way that fits almost hand in hand of what, what would have been done historically for the auto contact tool. Um, to work in this case with connectors to allow the users to be able to go through the process using the representation revision part workflows, but still being able to manage contacts and connectors and that sort of stuff. And then the, so that's kind of really where that sits in that space. Um, and then the other side of this is the attachments. So in this case, we selected node in space. We've only supported the, the rigid spider use cases for these ones. Um, it didn't make a lot of sense to support um, the rigid patch, but in this case, the user can specify the sphere, the cylinder or a box. You specify the radius size that you want to capture. We do a preview of, of, of that area and we can realize the attachment. Now, in this case, because it's attachment is only single linked, but this could be useful for um, hard point management. If you just want to hard points in space and you just want to tie a hard point to a, to a structure or something along those lines, um, or you just want to rigidize everything within a certain particular uh, sphere. This is this is kind of where this this option sits. This was sort of previously available from a, um, the projection type attachment, but this is now an explicit physical shape. For this one, we don't support absorption um, because it's very difficult to, to, to reconstruct the shape that was that was used historically. Um, so we don't absorb we don't support absorption for these, but we do support absorption for contacts. So if you do have a model that uses classical contacts and you want to try and convert it to connectors, that is possible. That does work. Um, we do have to edit the contacts during the absorption process. Um, so it is structured as a single group per patch. Um, otherwise, if you unrealize a connector that's associated with one patch or another, it becomes very difficult to manage. So during the process of absorption, we break the, the, the contacts and the sets down into 
effectively a patch per connector and then you can unrealize it and realize it again that way. The other side of, um, we support line connectors for contacts as well. So in this case, if I select a line and again, we change the type to contact. Again, we support surf to surf card image. And we also, in this case, this is where if you've got a single line defined, but you want to select a larger area, you can do it this way as well. And realize, and again, we've got a third group created here. For your contact patch. So this is really the only the kind of the first step in the introduction of um, contacts for connectors. So I'm sure we'll get requests for future enhancements and, and that sort of thing.